It's the advent of cyber 2023, and we are on a mission to save Christmas. McGreedy, you are going down. I have the THM army with me. Let's go. Yeah. Uh. I'm a papa shell, but not what you think. Who am my root? Make it dead a leg sink. We are on a mission. We're here to save Christmas. McGreedy's going down. Forget about the riches. Rumors gun around, like Skitty's got snitches. It's an insider threat, and everyone's suspicious. Recon Mick Red is hunting down a witness. He says he needs our help, so power on your system. Get your black hoodie, boot up the attack box. Hackers come together and take command of the sock. It's the THM army. McGrady will get caught from the Zero X1 all the way up to the gods. Ah! Well, hey everyone, it is the most wonderful time of the year, which means it is time for TriHackMe's Advent of Cyber, and we together have made it to day 22 as we work to save Christmas. My name is Tyler Ramsby, and I have the honor of doing the official walkthrough for day 22, and we are gonna learn all about server-side request forgery, also known as SSRF. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the story. So as the elves try to recover the compromised servers, Mick Skiddy, my favorite person, his SOC team identified abnormal activity and noticed that a massive amount of data is being sent to an unknown server. Never a good thing we identified that in day nine. An insider has likely created a malicious backdoor. We have an insider threat. McSkitty has contacted Detective Frost Yule from law enforcement to help them. Can we assist the detective in taking down the command and control server? I think we can do it. As I tell my kids, teamwork makes the dream work. So what are our learning objectives? Well, first, we want to understand what SSRF actually is. We need to know the different types that are used to exploit the vulnerability. We need to know the prerequisites. What do you need in place for it to be vulnerable? We need to know like how does the attack actually work, how to exploit it, and finally, some mitigation measures for protect and what I'll say guys is I work as a pen tester and I do a lot of web apps and I see this in the real world So if you want to be a pen tester if you want to do bug bounties If you want to be in the blue team and just understand what this is so you can patch it pay attention like this really is real world stuff So what exactly is SSRF? Well, it is also known as server-side request forgery. That's a long name It's a security vulnerability that occurs when an attacker tricks a web app into making unauthorized requests to internal or external resources on the server's behalf. This is key. The requests are not coming from the attacker, it's coming from the web app, so it looks trusted to other services on the internal network. This can allow an attacker to interact with internal systems, potentially leading to data exposure or unauthorized actions. Leaving web apps vulnerable to SSRF can have profound security implementation implementation implications oh my goodness that is hard to say potentially leading to unauthorized access to internal systems rce data breaches or the application being further compromised three different types basic in a basic attack the attacker sends a crafty request from the vulnerable server to internal or external resources for example they might attempt to access files on the local file system internal services or databases that are not intended to be publicly accessible Blind SSRF, this is what I often see in the wor real world. In a blind SSRF attack, the attacker doesn't directly see the response to the request. Instead, they may infer information about the internal network by measuring the time it takes for the server to respond or observing error message changes. And then we have semi-blind. In semi-blind SSRF, again, the attacker does not receive direct responses in their browser or application. However, they rely on indirect clues, side channel information, or observable effects within the application to determine the success or failure of their SSRF request. This might involve monitoring changes in application behavior, response times, error messages, or other signs. So what are some of the prerequisites? What do we need in place? Well, number one, we need, of course, vulnerable input points. Web apps must have input fields susceptible to manipulation, such as URLs or file upload functionalities. And two, we need a lack of input validation. The application should have adequate input validation or effective sanitization mechanisms allowing an attacker to craft malicious requests. So how exactly does it work? We have a sweet diagram here, but first we need to identify vulnerable input. So the attacker locates an input field within an application that can be manipulated to trigger server-side requests. You'll see like URL, file, things like that. This could be a URL parameter in a web form, an API endpoint, a request parameter input such as refer. 
manipulate the input. Of course, once we identify it, we need to inject our malicious URL or other payloads that cause the application to make these unintended requests. This could be a URL pointed to an internal server, a loopback address, or an external server under the attacker's control. And three, requesting unauthorized resources. The application server, unaware of the malicious input we are working in the background, makes a request to the specified URL or resource. This request could target internal resources, sensitive services, or external systems. And finally, exploitation. Depending on the application's behavior and our payload, the attacker's payload, the response from the malicious request may provide valuable information such as internal server data, credentials, system credentials, or pathways for further exploitation. So we are going to hack a command and control server. Now, Disclaimer, hacking the command and control server is ethically unacceptable and illegal. Any suspected C2 activity should be reported to the appropriate incident response team for investigation and mitigation. This knowledge is provided solely for educational purposes. I felt like I was supposed to read that really fast. Like, you know, in those commercials where they have the disclaimer, it is important though. I just wanted to see how fast I could read it. All right, Detective Frost, you check the C2 against known vulnerabilities, but none worked. He decided to give SSRF a shot. Now that we know how it works, can we help Detective Frost Ewell take down the C2 server? So let's take control. Before moving forward, review these questions. So do I need to start the attack box today? Yes. I, and I already did it. Do I need to start a VM today? Yes. And I already did it. In case you didn't start your VM, if you go up here, just click the start machine green button. It takes just a few minutes to boot up. Is there split screen available, direct link? We don't need to do any of that stuff, but those are two things needed for this task. And then we also need to add this to our Etsy host file. And let me explain a little bit about what we're doing here. First, let me just pause. This right here is the terminal. So if you're new to the attack box, new to Linux in general, go ahead and open this to open the terminal. We'll make it full screen here. And what we are gonna do is since we're root, we don't have to do sudo, but it's a good practice because you're not often running as root on a Linux VM. So we'll do sudo, which means, hey, super user do uh it's debatable what it actually means but we want the super user the root user to do this so do sudo and then type nano if you're new to linux once again nano is sort of like a text editor not sort of it really is a text editor so if you're used to windows think about notepad nano is sort of like notepad for linux always there always built in so sudo nano and then what we want to modify it's etsy host now our etsy host file is what resolves ip addresses to names. And so we're going to add this McScreedy or McGreedy secret C2.thm to our Etsy host file with this corresponding IP. So type sudo nano Etsy host and click enter. And then we got this pulled up. And what we're going to do is go ahead and copy this and go to our Etsy host and paste, hit the tab key on your keyboard like that. And then we will copy this and we will go ahead and paste that in there. And now to save it, I know it looks super intimidating seeing all this crazy stuff on here. All you have to do is hold the control button on your keyboard and then hit the X button. And it will say, hey, save modified buffer. Click Y on your keyboard. And now just click enter. And we have saved it. And to see if it actually works, we can pull up Firefox. And we'll copy our URL to the C2 server. And there we go, we are at our command and control server. Now, before we even look ahead, would encourage you to pause and look at how would you exploit this? We have a login field, but we don't have credentials. So you might think SQL injection, something along those lines, but we know we're learning about SSRF and the task talked about API. So we're probably gonna go to that, but before I get ahead of ourselves, let's read through the task. Remember, step one is to identify a vulnerable input. Once we visit the URL, we see that it's protected by a login panel. McSkitty's pen tester team have launched different types of automated manual scans to gain access, but all in vain. For a target to be exploitable through SSRF, we need to use vulnerable code or forge the request to the server. Sometimes these requests can be found through scanning, viewing source code, or other documentation logs. We need to manipulate the input. So McSkiddy and we, we notice there's a link to documentation. We have this API link. So let's go ahead and click that. And now we have some API documentation. And it says, how can I access the API to fetch data from an agent? Well, it says you need to visit the endpoint machine IP. That's our IP, get client data. And now this is what should stand out to you. We have a URL parameter. If you saw URL, 
file, anything like that, we know it's making a request to an external resource. And so maybe, just maybe, we are able to abuse that. And we have an example here. If our client IP is .10 and ours is .20, if we wanna grab messages from our machine, we can see the URL schema right there. How many requests can we make in a minute? Well, there's no rate limiting, so we can make as many as we want. And this is key as well. Is there any IP or protocol whitelisting enabled? We have not enabled any whitelisting, so you can use any protocol, right? These are bad news. You don't want to enable those protocols or protocols like Gopher, things like that. You don't want those enabled, so that should also be a clue to us. Hmm, this might be vulnerable to SSRF. And now we have this. What is the file name that contains all the important credentials? You're not normally gonna see that in API docs, but we see config.php is a file that contains default credentials for the dashboard. So if we can abuse SSRF, and get config.php, then we can log into the C2 server and go ahead and take things over. And if you look at this, it's gonna explain a little bit about how we are able to do that, kind of repeating what we already looked at, an example of how to exploit the resource. And I do wanna walk through what's going on here. So we'll go ahead and make this request, and then I'll explain what it's doing. So we'll grab that, open a new tab, and we can just paste that in. Now, what this is showing us is the index.php of the web server. Now, if you're new to Linux, what we're doing here is we're using file, which means, hey, we want you to look at a file locally on the back end web server. This is why you don't want file enabled as a protocol. And these are directories or folders if you think about Windows. So we're in the var folder, and within that we're in the www, which should make you think of a website, then HTML, which should also make you think of a website, and then index.php, sort of like, the home page, but remember PHP is server side code, which means this isn't normally available to you. You don't just right click view source and are usually able to see PHP code, but here is one way we can see it by using SSRF. And we can see by looking at the PHP code, it is including config.php. So if the documentation did not tell us that config.php was a place we could find credentials, we can notice it right here and that should be, huh, maybe we can look at credentials there. So we know that config.php is gonna be probably in the same root directory. And so if we do config.php, look at that. We have some credentials, a username and a password. And just for our notes, whenever I find stuff like this, I think it's good to include it, which you can see when I was uh, working through all this, I already have my notes there, but you can open that up for subble or sublime text and include the username and password there. So the file scheme, which I already talked about a little bit, will allow you to go directly to a file. We can also do things like Etsy password, which is a good POC. Etsy password, contrary to the name, doesn't store passwords. It used to in the very old version of Linux, but now the passwords are these X placeholders right here. But with Etsy password, we can see all the users that are on the machine and be able to kind of plan out an attack path if we were enumerating another machine, a CTF, or working on an actual web app pen test. I'll go back over to this though. And now we have our C2 credentials by getting config.php. So how do you mitigate it? Well, you employ strict input validation and sanitization to prevent malicious input, right? Just stop it there. You can use allow list to control which domains and IPs the application can access. So don't allow it to access local hosts or 127, those loopback addresses or internal IPs have a allow list so that those aren't on the allow list. Only have certain IPs, URLs on that allow list. Three is apply network segmentation to restrict requests to authorized resources. And finally, always follow the principle of least privilege, granting the minimum permissions required for system operations. Least privileges requires not only to people, but it also applies to systems such as a web server. If a web server does not need access to a certain part of the network or a certain file, do not give it access. Always practice the principle of least privilege. So let's go through our questions. Number one, is SSRF the process in which the attacker tricks a server into loading only external resources? Well, no, because we just loaded an internal resource so we can confidently say nay. What is the C2 version? Well, let's go ahead and log in and we'll use these creds. So we have McGreedy. We'll just copy that, paste it in, copy this and paste it in and we will sign in. So what is the C2 version? If we scroll down here, we can see the C2 version is 1.1. What is the username for accessing the C2 panel? Well, we already got that information right here. Our username is Mick Reedy. 
There we go. What is the flag value after accessing the C2 panel? And we can see that right here, here is our flag panel, or our flag panel, our flag in the panel. So we'll copy that. And what is the flag value after stopping the data exfiltration from the mix skiddy computer? So we can go ahead and remove this here and remove it. Let's stop this data exfiltration going. And there is our flag agent removed 101. So we'll go ahead and copy that, paste that in there. And then if you enjoyed the task, we'll complete that. And the SSRF room is really good. So if you have not done the SSRF room on Try Hack Me, check it out. I would also encourage you to try out the OWASP uh, the new OWASP rooms on Try Hack Me as well. They also go through SSRF, really good resources, really good resources for learning. And there's some great CTF rooms on Try Hack Me where SSRF is the initial entry point where you're reading creden credentials sort of like this, very real world in the way you would approach this in the real world. So hey, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and we are getting really close to saving Christmas. Kudos to the entire Try Hack Me team for this incredible event that they put on every single year and happy hacking, have fun saying Chris saving Christmas. I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.